Hello guys and welcome back to another part of Red Embrace Hollywood where we're doing a back to back recording session. Last part we met Lazarus. That was a trip on its own. I wanted to go talk to Randall, he wasn't at home. Now we're at the hotel, trying to decide between approach the woman by the desk or talk to David. If you're interested in playing this game, there will be links in the description to the itch.io and for the Steam page. If you want to support the devs via Patreon, that is also in the description. Uh, approach the woman by the desk. Let's go approach the woman by the desk. I approached the woman curiously. It almost seemed like she was waiting for someone. Oh my god, you're pretty! <sighs> oh no! <laughs> oh, what do we have here? When I grew close, she gave a soft, theatrical gasp, blinking at me with inquisitive brown eyes. You're quite the striking young man. I'd certainly remember if we met before. Delighted to make your acquaintance. My name is... Hold on. Self-voicing enabled. Ching Ying. Ching Self-voicing disabled. <laughs> mm. And you might be... I'm Antonio. Maybe we'll end up as more than acquaintances, or... <laughs> nice to meet you, I'm Antonio. Nice to meet you, I'm Antonio. We're not going this way. <laughs> Antonio, you said... I think Miss Luck might have mentioned you to me. She's talking about me? What? Hopefully good things. She tapped her finger on her cheek, glancing off as if to recall the memory. You have good timing. Showing up when you did. I'm waiting to begin a meeting with one of Miss Luck's associates, but I forgot to bring along something to read, and my mind keeps wandering off places it shouldn't. She sighed, sounding faintly distressed, although I had noticed an excited sparkle in her gaze. <coughs> oh! I'm from a coven in New York, not Los Angeles. I flew in a few hours ago, actually. She's gonna keep distracting me with her pretty face. Stop. <laughs> but I can't concentrate on business at all. Not light. Not when the love of my life is in this city. Oh. Of course, I haven't completely won her over yet. Which is a tiny problem. Oh god, no, lesbians! Stop! Stop in the name of love! <laughs> no, actually, no. Keep going. Oh, who is she? Or, or your love is unrequited then? Uh, your love is unrequited then. Oh no, that's not it. It's just, well, a little complicated. Okay. A short pause fell between us as Xingying hesitated, her smile turning more distant. Oh girl. I used to be a lady in waiting some time ago. Uh, quite a while ago actually. Imperial China. Wow. Time flies, doesn't it? Yo! It just so happened that I served the most beautiful, exquisite, radiant princesses to ever grace the Earth's surface. Of course, I fell impossibly in love with her. I was doomed from the start. Incredibly blessed woman that I am, she somehow fell in love with me too. And for a time we were... We were just the happiest creatures alive. Okay, what happened? She sighed dreamily, eyelids briefly fluttering closed in a rapturous look. Things couldn't stay like that forever though. Happiness in the mortal world just never lasts. My princess, you see, she had to marry this wretched diplomat from the west. And I went along with her. The wedding was just awful to sit through. Oh. But then it just so happened that a few months later, her husband very tragically passed away. Awful. It was so sudden it caught us all by surprise. Complete surprise. Yet there was a silver lining. His death allowed the princess and I to finally be together. So who am I to question fate? What happened then? Was one of you turned into a vampire? Or hang on a second, did you kill her husband? We're not gonna question that. Lesbians for life. What happened then? Was one of you turned into a vampire? Oh, well the princess, she passed away a short time after that. No, We were both still human, and on her dying breath, she made a pact to reunite in the next life, to fall in love again. Oh god, my gay heart. Then about a year later, I was turned by an Iskari vampire, which threw quite a wrench into our eternal rendezvous. <laughs> now I found her a number of times since then, in very different bodies. But I always know it's her, and I fall in love with her each time, just like I did at the beginning. Oh god, that's so cute. Despite her words, Jingying 
Toe never lost a certain determined, cheerful energy. The only problem is... Well, I've never gotten permission to turn her. She's still something of a stubborn soul, even after each rebirth, and, e and every time I have to see her die as a human again. Oh god. If only I could find a way to remake our connection from the past, to have her join me in the Empyrean bonds of undying love. Even if it means abandoning the sun forever. You're a lovely woman, Chingy. I know you'll be able to win her over eventually, or... Your dedication after all those years is incredible. Doesn't she appreciate that? Or maybe you should let her go and pursue a new love. Oh, my gay heart doesn't like the last two options. <laughs> I like the first one. I hate the second one because it's like, oh, you've been loving her all these years and she doesn't appreciate that. Like, like, nah, you don't. You're not entitled to that. Or maybe you should let her go and pursue a new love. Uh, but it seems like every time they find each other, they do fall in love every time. It's just like trying to get her to accept the bite, that's the problem. You're a lovely woman, Ching Ying. I know you'll be able to win her over eventually. Stop that fish. That's the sweetest encouragement I've ever heard in such a long time. Please stop. The gay behind this gay man is dying. <laughs> With a warm sigh, Ching Ying reached out, gently touching my shoulder. I was longing to visit her tonight, to keep the torch of our love burning brightly. You've listened so wonderfully to me, dear. What do you think I should do? Keep pursuing the princess, show her how far you're willing to go for your love, or entice her, love her sweet- Send her sweet reminders of your love, but keep a distance until she's ready. Crap. I'm not romantic, I don't know what the fuck. The first one seems a little creepy. <laughs> the second one also seems a little creepy, but in a lesser degree. <laughs> Because when I read this, it's like, show her how far you're willing to go for your love. And it's like, oh. Which one's more Antonio's style? It's the first one. Antonio is the first one. Keep pursuing the princess. Show her how far you're willing to go for your love. Yes. Yes, I think you're completely right. I'll win her over eventually. And then my darling princess won't keep slipping away time and again. Thank you so much, Antonio. Hopefully you didn't fuck that up. <clears throat> of course, I hope things work out for you, or... You're welcome, Sunday. I'd like to find an eternal romance, too. Oh god, that's so sloppy. Or, no need to thank me, or... Sure, go get her, champ. <laughs> You're welcome. Someday I'll find... I'd like to find an eternal romance, too. You will. Oh, I'm sure you will. And you deserve it. I don't doubt that for a second. You're an absolute, you're an absolute joy to be around. <clears throat> I'll have to mention to Miss Luck how impressed I am with her new agent. I wasn't expecting to find such an open heart and mind here. Oh God, please! But you're certainly proved otherwise, Antonio. God, my mother! Look at her, God! I want to be that princess. <laughs> she beamed at me fondly, touching one of her glittered ring earrings with a small chuckle. Ah, here comes the man I was supposed to be meeting with. I think I'll have to go off now. Thank you for your company, Antonio. And take care. God dang. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Wiggling her fingers gently at me. Xing Ying. Wow, I'm already forgetting how to say her name. Turned towards the approaching Iskari agent. I watched as they strode off towards the meeting rooms together. Her bubbling stream of conversation slowly fading into the distance. Go upstairs to talk to David, go find Charisse. You better go talk to David. <coughs> you probably go talk to Charisse, but okay. Priorities. <laughs> After a knock on the door between my room and David's, he ush he rushed to greet me. Hello, baby. Hello, Antonio. Hello. How are you? I have seen better nights, but so it goes. Pretty happy now that I've gone to see your cute face. Or, I'm back from my nightly sewer crawl, so just standy. <laughs> I'm back from my nightly sewer crawl, so just standy. Uh, sewers? Well, okay, that must be a vampire thing. It isn't. So, was there something you wanted to talk about? How does our relationship feel to you right now? Tell me. Well, 
Actually, I really wish you'd feed for me more, Antonio. Oh god, baby. I love being close to you, but I'd like you to drink for me again, too. But to be honest, I don't really want to. It's not because I hate you, but it's because I love you. I really hope you change your mind soon. Maybe you should get out of the hotel now and then, or do you think your friend will worry about you, or... That's all for now. Maybe you should get out of the hotel now and then. Huh? Oh my god, did I say the wrong- Oh, no, I don't want to. There's not much of me out there, and besides, I'm pretty happy in your room, honestly. That's not exactly a healthy attitude, David. <laughs> no, baby, I want you the best for you. You could come back here, I won't throw you out. Yeah, probably not, you're right. I mean, things will change someday. Maybe I'll figure out what I want to do, you know? Oh my god, he's thinking about his future! But it's not like there's a rush or anything, and I can't do something I'm not good at or interested in. So I'm okay waiting for now. Cool. Do you think your family will worry about you? I don't know. They probably just figured I ran away from home. Which I guess I did, huh? Well, they've got their own problems, and I don't think they'll worry about me. He lets us a small, weak chuckle. But that's fine. Oh, baby. Actually, now that I think about it, David is very much like the familiar kind of like little brother in this route, because I'm just like, I can't feed from him. I want to take care of him, though. I want to make sure he's safe. Have you talked to any other vampires yet? Uh, not besides the one who brings me food and stuff. And that scary lady with the red hair when we first came in. <laughs> But it's like, if I have you, I don't really need them, you know? You should talk to people. David shrugged, beaming at me brightly. Stop being so cute. What does it feel like when I drink from you? I haven't drunk from him except for that one time. <laughs> We're not gonna go. That's all. You can go back. That's all. You can go back now. I, I like you. Be careful. Okay, I'm happy we could talk more, Antonio. So do I. I'll be here if you want to drink from me again. He returned to his room with a shy smile on his face, glancing back at me before closing his door. Is that the end? Can I go to Cherise? Went back down to the lobby, but it was empty now. We'll find Cherise. Let's see if we can find Cherise. Cherise seemed more than a little agitated when I left the room. But maybe it was worth trying to speak with her again. She was still inside the meeting room, pacing back and forth, lost in thought. If with that talk that we had with Heath, I'm wondering if she probably loved Lazarus. <laughs> Lazarus. Oh, if that's a thing. Or like she was really fond of Lazarus. Don't know why, but you know. And when I opened the door, she abruptly stopped, turning towards me. Hello. Hello. Antonio. Hi. Did you leave something behind in the meeting room? I assume there's a reason why you returned. I just want to talk to you. You seem distressed, so I came to see if you wanted company. Or actually, I wanted to talk a little more with you. You seem distressed, so I came to back to see if you wanted company. I know, I'm such a big softy and you want to kick me out. The company? That was rather presumptuous of you, but I am... Uh, I am appreciative of the thought. She cleared her throat deliberately, adjusting her glasses. If there's something you desperately need to discuss with me, I'm listening. Wow, we haven't talked to her like this before. <laughs> About yourself? How did you rise to power? How do you usually feed? What made you decide to keep me around? What's your system of government for vampires? About something else. How did you rise to power? I'm not sure I appreciate your choice of words. Rise to power is usually a phrase applied to dictators in history books. She gave me a dry look, sniffing quietly. The vampires of the city were once ruled by a very mild-tempered Golgotha. Actually, to say he ruled is something of an understate- of an overstatement. Not an understatement, an overstatement. He managed our laws, but he also tried his very part is not to step on anyone's toes. 
which as you can imagine resulted in nothing ever getting done. <clears throat> he was trying his best. <laughs> Eventually the weak-willed imbecile got himself assassinated by a frustrated individual, leaving things in a complete mess. I'd served as one of his advisors for quite a few years, and during that time I garnered a reputation for my capabilities. With allies in all houses, in fact. So after some encouragement from my peers, I simply stepped up to the plate. No one else had the initiative, and for some time, no one had any real issues with my leadership either. But as with all societies, contentment never lasts. How do you usually feed? I drink clean blood donated by mortals in the prime of health. Not blood pits, mind you, but rather those who've been led to believe they're assisting a local hospital. Which, in my view, is far more tasteful. Oh, so she drinks from blood bags? Of course, I consume it solely from glasses. I find it quite revolting to stick my teeth into someone's flesh. Wow! No wonder you didn't like my blood food. <laughs> Her upper lip curled briefly in disgust. What made you decide to keep me around? There are a myriad of reasons, most of which I hoped were self-evident. She sighed faintly. I'm not using you for my personal gain, as you might believe. More accurately, I think you can help me steer relations towards peace. Through shows of power or benevolence. There you go. Your circumstances made you a wild card. The sympathy and curiosity that a mistake like you arouses means you can influence a wider variety of options. I've never allowed or witnessed an accidental turning before. But the situation can be turned to benefit all of us. As long as self-interests don't interfere. Aren't you afraid of me betraying you or I don't plan on letting you down? Aren't you afraid of me betraying you? I'd like to believe you're intelligent enough to know what a pitiful mistake that would be. Of course, I'm not so foolish as to stop you from mingling with Mavar or Goldatha. In fact, winning their respect certainly doesn't hurt. But my organization is not only the strongest in LA, but we're also the only faction with a reasonable system of government. I'm sure you have the common sense to see past any dislike you might harbor for me, as well as any cinematic fantasies of anarchy Randall might have put in your head. <laughs> I realize how essential a practical leader is. <sighs> but once the war is over, I can't mandate you to stay. What's your system of government for vampires? I won't lie and say it's democratic. In case you didn't realize, immortal beasts find it impossible to agree on anything. Believing otherwise was the mistake my predecessor made. But simply, I determine our rules but I act with the assistance of several advisors, one of each house. For a time it worked very efficiently. We divided territory, avoided any unwanted turnings or overpopulation, and lived in a peaceful underworld beneath human society. But when Randall formed his clan, the Var began flocking to him. They idolized him, and he turned them against me. He didn't mean it, no. <laughs> That was the beginning of our fracture. The Golgotha, sensing the rising tensions, grew eager to gain more power, and as a result, formed their own rebellious force. Of course, I've told both factions I'm willing to adjust various rules to accommodate them, but they seek only total control or my removal. God, this is a hard situation. It's too complicated! And I will not kneel to their schoolyard bullying. How about someone else? What's your relationship with Marcus? Are you close to Heath? What are your thoughts on Randall? What's your relationship with Marcus? I suppose you could call him a mercenary of sorts. He doesn't work for me per se, but he usually agrees to an exchange of favors, if you will. Do you think he'll ever officially join your side, or do you know how old he is? Do you think he'll ever officially join your side? He won't. He told me. Do you know how old he is? I'd like to know that too, but I doubt we'll ever learn an exact number. He only appeared about three years ago, and I'd never seen him nor heard anything of him until our first meeting back then. For all we know, he is- <laughs> like I said before, for, so for all we know, he's only been a vampire for three years. He might be quite young, or very old, or perhaps something in between. I'd ra it's rather hard for me to say. 
She shook her head with a hint of annoyance. Are you close to Heath? He likes you. I consider him to be intelligent and well-meaning, even though he occasionally, s even though he's occasionally self somewhat self-absorbed. By that I mean he loses sight of his community, the well-beings of his fellow vampires, simply because he can't control his own emotions. I don't like to play favorites among my associates, but I do delegate things to Heath frequently, if only to keep him busy and distracted from his various ill habits. Her tone sounded slightly more guarded, even hesitant, but she swiftly cut her words short as if realizing this herself. You might yet become something great, one day. What are your thoughts on Randall? You and Lazarus, oh my god. I'm ready for the tea! <laughs> He has a very dangerous position of power. The sway he holds over his followers could be turned towards unifying the coven, but instead they struggle for anarchy. I don't consider him an evil man, and I still hope to reach a compromise with him. I just want him to cease his ridiculous struggle with no possible positive outcome. But I find myself even less optimistic. You and Lazarus. Oh, baby girl. Did you like this man? Did you like the serial killer? <laughs> when I mentioned Lazarus' name, Cherise inhaled a small, sharp breath. God. Lazarus is very powerful and incredibly hard to track down. He, ha he haunts both the sewers and the darkest streets, often catching vampires unaware because of his mortal presence. Our agreement was that he would stop needlessly killing and instead serve as my bodyguard and enforcer. Once people recognize his power, the strength of his presence could have helped me drive out Andre and convince the Mavar to surrender or leave. Of course, I realized the horrible way he'd gained his power, and although I wasn't going to let him continue, I knew how dangerously vo volatile he could be. Oh my god. But if it meant potentially saving the lives of many vampires under my protection, no matter his disturbing men- Girl, I'm getting frustrated here. <clears throat> but if it meant potentially saving the lives of many vampires under my protection, no matter his uh, no matter his disturbed mental state, that was a choice I was willing to make. Girl, you're so caught up in like sacrificing the few for the mass. Why was the original turning supposed to be supposed to take place in public? Is it was it because you wanted to hide that from the other houses? <laughs> Why did you meet each other? Normal vampire hunters are not particularly fearsome. Thus, when the amount of deaths slowly increased, but the number of hunters stayed the same, I suspected something was afoot. After a great deal of investigation, my agents managed to pinpoint Lazarus' identity. Although they repeatedly failed to catch him, and so I had them leave a peace treaty of sorts instead. Oh no for him to find. Sure enough, he left a response the next night. Eventually, he agreed to meet, and first addressed, and I first addressed him with several of my agents to protect me. His appearance shocked all of us. He was surprisingly willing to negotiate. Indeed, he almost seemed reluctant, reluctant for us to leave him. Lazarus agreed to future talks, though under the conditions that I spoke to him alone, and for some unfathomable reason, I was sented to it. For several months, I paid many visits to him by myself, unaccompanied. It was incredibly dangerous, and those sewers were the most putrid place I ever set foot in. But Lazarus never laid a finger on me during those hours when I listened to him. I said very little, just letting him talk as he pleased, and he had so much to say, as if he'd never gotten to speak his mind before. No matter how much his cannibalism repulsed me, I start to see it as an illness, something that could be cured. I believed I could eventually change his ways if he joined me and I could always and I was always there to guide him. I thought I could give him another chance at a happy life, one he never had before. Girl, you fell into our trap of beauty. <laughs> I thought he could learn to stop killing, and through our long talks, maybe I had helped him understand that wanton murder would have only bring him more pain. But it seemed like I was wrong. About something else. About something that happened. I paid a visit to Andrea. 
I caught a hunter who said you were directing them to the Mavar. <clears throat> Do I say it? Oh no. <laughs> Where's the back button? I caught a hunter who said you were just directing them to the Mavar. What? That's absolutely preposterous. If I were to try to turn the human's attention towards the Mavar, why would I be bothered with those photographers on the beach? Besides, I achieved nothing by indiscriminately murdering members of my coven, regardless of whether or not they're Mavar. I should hope you don't believe those ridiculous things, Antonio. Take me back! <laughs> I paid it as a Chandra earlier. Andre, is it? <clears throat> We've stiffened a little. I don't like keeping secrets from her at the same time, though, so... I'm not surprised he approached you. It was only a matter of time. Let's not waste time being coy with each other. I know he must have offered you no small amount of vit vitriol, like, words about me. Perhaps he even asked you to join him. I'm not incorrect, am I? He did, but I refused. No, he didn't, actually. He did, but I refused. I see. A prudent decision on your part, but I'm sure I don't need to tell you. Freeze gave me a long, somewhat dub d dubious look. Andre is certainly charming in his own bizarre, frigid way. His powers of persuasion can rival even the most charismatic of his car at times. Part of the appeal may come from the fact that he is thoroughly convicted in his own beliefs. And those beliefs are so dangerous that I could sooner agree to Randall's leadership than Andre's. Exposing ourselves to humanity will only end in bloodshed and prejudice. There's no way around it. And beyond that, his intent is to ultimately spread the race of vampires, to make the whole human race suffer simply because we suffer, is abhorrent. Ad it isn't evolution, it's taking away the core of life and death, the one thing that truly makes humans what they are. We have no fear or connection to either, not because we have evolved, but because we have lost something dear to us. And he would drag everyone down in their darkness, Whose conscience would just let them stand by and accept that? She trailed off bitterly, clenching her gloved hand. I believe I already discussed myself enough. Ask me anything else if you wish. Or we can move on. <coughs> That's all for now, I think. Thanks for entertaining me. Very well. Then I'll be taking my leave. Good night, Antonio. Turning towards the door, she swiftly strode towards it, slipping away in the hall. I left the meeting room after Sharice's footsteps faded away and returned to the lobby. Leave the lobby? After I glanced at the clock, I realized sunrise wasn't far off. So I decided to head upstairs to my room. Flipping off the lights, I gazed out of the window into a sparkling panorama. It was so strange to think that if I hadn't been turned, this room would have belonged to Lazarus. Where would I have been right now? Still in Hollywood, chasing my dreams? Or if Hollywood had directed me, would I end up somewhere very different instead? With my cold cheek pressed to the pillow, I left another night of unsettling thoughts for the comforting arms of sleep. After my encounter with Lazarus, Sharice gave me the night off. Nice. I slept in a little bit, but no one called or visited me, so I decided to prowl the city by myself. Go oh, visit Randall. <laughs> in the short while I've been in Hollywood as a human, I found an unusual spot that quickly captured my interest. It was only open late at night due to its unique nature, so now was the perfect time to visit. The place happened to be a miniature bat cave with live bats. 
Surreal art gallery with also a Buddhist monk retreat? What? <laughs> Devious S&M clubs tucked away somewhere dark. <laughs> Um, <laughs> that's quite hilarious. Miniature bat cave with live bats. I also like the surreal art gallery that was also a Buddhist monk retreat. <laughs> In a tiny house on the outskirts of Hollywood, some Buddhist monks had apparently set up shop. During the day, they operated the art gallery, which was full of Salvador Dali ripoffs and painters who'd rewatched Eraserhead too many times. But at night, they led meditation sessions that would have been very relaxing if not for the disembodied eyes and mouths staring at you from the canvases on the wall. <laughs> oh my god, that's hilarious. It was a pleasant night, so I just decided to stroll there instead of taking a taxi. But as I stood at the crosswalk, I noticed someone familiar hurrying towards me. Who is it? Who is it? The man from Ebertor, Nick, is in the Larbuli. Hello. Hey, Antonio. Hey, what's up? Going to check out Buddhist monks and meditation and art. <laughs> he slowed to a halt in front of me, his eyes darting around briefly. What's happening? I thought I could catch you. I've been looking for you all night. Okay. Hello, Nick. Why are you looking for me? Or let me guess, some kind of bad news, right? Hello, Nick. Why were you looking for me? Randall wanted to see you. Nice, nice, nice. So I offered to take the message. I'm pretty good at tracking folks down with their scent patterns. It's like science, you know. He smirked for a moment, rolling his shoulders. You're so proud of yourself. You should head to the beach. Randall's out by the shore, or was when I left him anyway. He would have called you, but Cherise has got to have your phone tapped. And after the other night, we couldn't risk the Iskari tracking us down. All right, I head over now. Why does he want to see me? Is something wrong? Right, I'll head over now. Sounds good. Maybe I'll catch you later. Sure, Nick. With that, Nick threw me a casual wave and strode off, leaving me to catch a taxi. During the ride to Santa Monica, I reflected on the last time I'd seen Randall. He looked badly shaken up, but all his followers were eager to protect him, clustering around their hero. I knew Randall was tough, probably tough enough that he'd already recovered from the assassination attempt. Still, when I'd left his side, there was a chill in his eyes that I'd never seen before. Hello, beautiful beach! After the car dropped me off by the pier, I strolled along the beach towards Randall's house. I felt calm, peaceful. At least until I was in earshot of the Mavar parting outside. Tonight they seemed to be gathering in full force, filling the house and scattering around the sand, drinking and laughing. Some of them seemed to notice me, but they quickly looked away instead of offering any greeting. Hmm. I'm nervous whenever I have to go here. As I crossed the sand in front of the house, I spotted two starkly different figures next to each other. Oh, hello. Alyusha. And then, when he came back furious the next day, do you know what Marcus told him? He said, why, pro prolapse builds character. No refunds. <laughs> That's fucking customer service. Aliushia and Jack were happily chatting away, holding drinks. I love them. They seemed too absorbed in their conversation for me to interrupt, so I kept walking past them. There was no sign of Randall among them of R. But it sounded like people were still talking about him. Oh, and I was telling Randall about some of my ideas earlier. Once Cherise is gone, think of all the great things we can do with LA. Yeah, but first we gotta lay down some rules so we don't get tyrants rising up again. Make sure that nobody's better than anyone else. A few of our sitting on the sand fired comments back and forth, nodding at each other's words. Oh yeah, of course. I bet Randall's gonna get everyone on the same page real quick. But what should we do with the Iskarian goals? There's no way they... The crashing waves drowned out the rest of their dialogue. I was about to head inside to look for Randall, but when I finally emerged from the group, I spotted a lone figure walking along the shore, gazing into the ocean. Even though he looked the same as always, the tall, broad body with steady strides, 
So think about him seems strangely vulnerable. Randall. Oh my god, it's been forever since I've seen you. <laughs> As I wandered up to his side, Randall turned his glance over to me, his face blank. The next moment, he put on a small welcoming smile, beckoning me to walk beside him. Hey, Antonio. Nice night out. Better now that you're here. Go stop. You look pretty lonely by yourself. Or why aren't you with your group? Or I was worried about you. I was I was worried about you. <laughs> worried about me? Why? Is my majestic aura not turned up to 11 or something? He chuckled a hollow sound, not like his deep bellowing laughs. What's up, Randall? I'm glad you got my message. As we walked along the shore, Randall's gaze slowly drifted past me, watching the laughing group in the distance. I wanted to go find you myself, but after I got shot, the others don't want me to go anywhere alone. They're real fired up now, even more than before. I took everything I had to keep them from launching an unplanned attack. Would have been mass suicide. His last words came in a disbelieving scoff, a little more coarse than I was used to hearing. Oh wow, you're real close. <laughs> you're so beautiful. Slowing to a halt, Randall turned to face me. You know, Antonio. He murmured my name quietly, his voice barely audible over the waves. Things won't be like this much longer. I know, and I'm dreading whatever will happen. Or, what makes you think that? I know, and I'm dreading whatever will happen. Yeah, and so am I. God damn, I feel like I got a bad ending. <laughs> Randall ran one hand through his long shaggy hair, exhaling a heavy sigh that sounded like it was being crushed out of him. The striking point is, Charisse doesn't want to get her claws out of LA. Andre too. He wants the power of the city even more than she does. His voice took on a hint of a snarl, but the moment of anger seemed to pass as quickly as it came, and his clenched fingers relaxed against his side. Listen, after the other night, I couldn't stop thinking about this, so I'm gonna come right out and say it. Okay? Are you gonna tell me your feelings, or are you just gonna tell me your plan? <laughs> I don't know if it'll be tomorrow, or next week, or next month, but this- this war is gonna have a shit show finale. I know. I know, bud. You'll have to pick a side. And if we're not on the same team- Oh fuck, boy. Don't give me that look. He trailed off, letting the silence finish his sentence. You'd fight against me. But I'm on your side, Randall. Or- Honestly, I wish I could stay neutral. <laughs> but you can't, honestly. In any other situation, you might have had a chance at that. But Charisse is ready to turn on your ass the second you try and ditch, and you need a lot of friends to protect you. Me, I'd, I'd do anything to keep you safe, Antonio. But unless you made it clear you're against Charisse, ugh. well, sometimes my word alone isn't enough to keep the overeager guys from lashing out. Oh God, he loves me. <laughs> He likes me at least. <laughs> He's like, I can't control my group, even though I would love to like <clears throat> make sure they don't do anything to you. No, oh, Randall. With a slow, uncertain shake of his head, Randall rubbed at his eyes. You know, if I'm gonna be honest, from what I've heard and seen, it sounds like you're more in Charisse's camp than anyone else's. Break which part will worry though. <laughs> it's hard for you to believe you're okay with her lording over all of us. Yeah, I'm sorry. His slow, disappointed words came in the cadence of a funeral march. I'm going to betray her, I'm just waiting for the right moment. If it comes down to choosing you or her, I'd choose you. Or I still haven't decided what I'm gonna do, or I believe he's trying to do the best thing, that's why I'm supporting her. I hate being so neutral! My neutral ass hates this! This is why I get bad endings, though. So. I do believe that Charisse is trying to do the right thing, but she's doing it all wrong. 
See, that's this thing though. If it comes down to choosing you or her, like between like you, like Randall and Sharice, I'd choose Randall. <laughs> but if it's between houses, it's like it's so hard for me to choose. If it comes down to choosing you or her, I'd choose you. I sure hope so, Antonio. I'm gonna be tested and it's gonna be like, haha, you have to choose one of these two, and I'm like, fuck. <laughs> I've heard plenty of people say the same thing, but when it comes down to it, they're never there when you need them. Well, you should just kill me right now, then. A sad smile weakly pulled at his lips for a moment before it faded away. When I was a kid, and even as a grown guy, I dealt with some fucked up things. You know, like most people do. I'm not gonna whine and bitch about it to you, or go on a TV talk show or whatever. But I'll say that most of the things happened because I was too weak to stand up for myself. Oh my god. His eyes drifted down to his open palm, where I noticed his bandages was covered with dark sketches. The figures he'd drawn looked even more deformed and abstract than normal. I went through so much fucking abuse from people who had power over me until one day I decided I couldn't take it anymore. So please, try and see where I'm coming from. That it's real fucking hard for me to accept someone pushing me down again, when I thought I'd finally gotten free. Okay, I get it. That was a dark place for me, and I don't want to go back. He stared at me for several worthless moments, his eyes darkening by a severity that I wasn't used to seeing. But... You know, the whole reason I brought this up was... Hey, Randall! <laughs> I'm gonna fucking cry! <laughs> He's gonna tell me his feelings! <laughs> and someone keeps coming and ruining it! <laughs> He's like, bitch, please! <laughs> when a voice called out to us, Randall froze. God damn it. Damn it, Nick! We both glanced back to see Nick waving at us from nearby, off towards the group. Randall! Marla and Joe were asking if you could show them. Tell them to fuck off! <laughs> wow. Randall snatched back, his voice only sharp and cold. Can't I talk to Antonio for one fucking minute? One fucking minute without some kind of shit happening. <laughs> Randall's hissed words trailed off. As the moment faded into silence, all three of us seemed equally caught off guard. Oh, Randall. Ah, oh, fuck it, I didn't mean to. Sorry, Nick. Don't worry about it. We know you're stressed. He shook his head, flashing Randall a smile. Our gazes met for a moment, and he offered me a short nod, too. I'll go help them. Say that you're busy with Antonio. You gotta take care of yourself. We need you, you know? Oh. God. With a short wave, Nick turned to stroll back to the house. It didn't seem like Randall's outburst had affected him at all. Tell me your words. We do always get interrupted, don't we? Or what was that about? No, uh, we do. We do always get interrupted, don't we? <laughs> right? Jesus. Everything from people barging in to me getting shot. Can I, I just have a conversation? <laughs> he had to sigh. A warmth slowly returning to his eyes. Shit. What was I saying? I need a goddamn secretary to follow me with a scratch pad. Oh yeah. The reason why I care so much about what happens to you. He fell silent again. This time he hesitantly scratched at his beard, mulling over something in his head. Help me, bitch! Are we friends? Are we an item? <laughs> Let's clear something up, Antonio. Something I should have asked you a long time ago. The atmosphere between us suddenly shifted a little. The way you feel about me, you don't feel the same way. How do you feel about me? I mean, I think about you a lot, or I care about you as a friend, as my mentor. Nah, bitch. I... I mean, I think about you a lot. <laughs> think about me, like the way you think about a friend. Or something different. As a friend, a dear friend. Or as something more. As something more! <laughs> oh god. <laughs> That's all I needed to hear. Oy. His glaze flickered between my eyes and lips, lingering on both in a longing way. Despite the desire in his eyes, it felt like Randall was hesitant, even anxious, 
Like someone about to touch a delicate work of glass. Just kiss me. What? It's happening. <laughs> but soon his arms coiled around me, changing me into a protective embrace. Before I knew it, his lips were inches for mine. Lean in, close my eyes, move back a little. Lean in. I press forward a little, helping to close the small space between us. Oh hell yeah! Thank the lord. We're here. We're here! <laughs> Our lips brushed against each other, lightly at first, uncertain. Then a longer touch, a kiss that felt much warmer than our cool bodies. I tasted hints of iron and alcohol, the sweetness of blood still lingering on his mouth. Mm -hmm. He growled softly against my lips, his tongue beginning to slowly press forward. Yo. Uh, part my lips and take the kiss, or keep the kiss soft and light. Whoa, we're dictating this? How far is this gonna go? Are we just gonna go for deep kiss? <laughs> I keep looking at my monitor like, can we do this? Oh my god, this is long. Part my lips and deepen the kiss. I parted my lips to let Randall's tongue tease into my mouth, sliding with my own. Our fangs gently clicked together, and that metallic flavor tingled my sentences, the taste of his last drink making my hunger stir. Oh what? So cute. I could feel one of his hands stroking my back, the other softly squeezing my waist. Even though his arms weren't exactly crushing me tighter against his chest, it seemed like Randall was holding back. Almost as if he were afraid to break me. Oh, oh. Maybe it was because we were in public, or because he was afraid of scaring me off. But his passion felt restrained, locked behind something. At last, Randall broke the kiss to pull me into a tight, enveloping hug. We stayed like that for some time, our arms coiled around each other. He kept my head pressed against his chest, though there wasn't a heartbeat or the gentle rhythm of breathing for me to hear. Only the soft crash of endless waves on the sand. Whoa. I hope you know what you're doing, Antonio. I wouldn't trust most people to handle me like this. I'm pretty fucked up. But you... You're different. His words came in a coarse whisper beside my ear, uncertain and hopeful at the same time. You've got this... Fuck. I don't know how else to say it. <clears throat> this will. Like you're strong enough to grab your own destiny and shape it. When I first saw you in that garage, the thought I thought to myself, this guy's not just a cute face. He's going places. Randall's words were filled with an unusual determination. Almost like he was talking to himself as much as me. I look at you, Antonio, and I honestly think you could do anything. And this world, it needs more people like you. It's been hard, but I don't plan on giving up, or... I think you have a little too much faith in me. I think you have a little too much faith in me. <laughs> nah, it's not too much. His tone abruptly grew sharp. You just don't have enough faith in yourself yet, that's all. But once you figure out how incredible you are, I don't think you'll see things the same way, Antonio. Before long, though, warmth sweeped back into Randall's voice. Finally releasing me from the embrace, Randall pulled away slightly, gazing intently at my face. The gentle wave slid up to touch the edges of our boots, before slowly falling back into the ocean. Ah, fuck. Sorry if I'm acting funny, Antonio. All this stress just gets to me sometimes. Almost having your head blown off doesn't make a guy feel any more relaxed, either. He rubbed a hand along his forehead, finally letting out a weak laugh. I've got to take responsibility not just for my own actions, but for the actions of everyone in the clan, in my group. I can't wait until all this war shit is over and I won't be stuck in this fucking role anymore. But until then... 
I need a sharp guy like you around to keep me sane, you know? A hopeful light flickered back into his eyes. I'm about as sharp as a butter knife, but I'll do my best, or your clanmates don't count? <laughs> I'm about as sharp as a butter knife, but I'll do my best. Don't pull yourself down like that, you don't deserve it. Besides, butter knives are still useful, you know? Cutting butter, spreading jam, giving warden stabs. <laughs> One of Randall's deep, earth-shaking laughs rumble in his chest. Just a little more hollow than it used to be. Well, Antonio, now that I've talked your goddamn ears off. It's a little while left until the sun comes up, and you never finished the story you were telling me about in Saturn Saturnalia. I didn't forget, you know. I still can't believe the fucking sea turtles were doing that. And the priest? How do you explain those bruises to the church later, huh? <laughs> I have some stories to tell. With Randall's arm curled around my waist, we slowly walked along the shore, falling into an easy conversation, like the ones we used to have. It felt so peaceful compared to our last meetings, almost unnervingly relaxed. Even though we weren't far from Hollywood, it could have been light years away from us, along with all the cares and worries of conflict. By the time I finally left the beach, Randall seemed happier than when I'd arrived, like his presence, like my presence alone had calmed him down. He was reluctant to let me go, but finally agreed, only after I promised to hang out with him again soon. I made my way towards the pier. I heard the sound of Randall's clanmates rushing up towards him, surrounding him like an adoring flock. And when I glanced over my shoulder, I could no longer make out his shape among them. We're stopping! We're stopping there! Stop! <laughs> oh, that was sweet. Oh god, we got a kiss. Hopefully I don't get like a terrible, 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 terrible bad ending. <laughs> I hope I get like a kind of like okay ending. Wish me luck. I'm not sure how far away we are from the ending, but I'm bad. I'm stressed. Thank you guys for watching. Hope to see you in the next part. Bye bye oh, I'm extremely human-like. God, I've chosen my side. We're going Mavar.